wild times. The guy that we're hanging out with is actually really, they're, they're very cool, This these people actually. The guy is a reporter for NBC News. That is but he, cool. He does a lot of cool, he doesn't do like political stuff. So he just got back from uh, Baja. He was just in Vaquita. Do you know where wow. Vaquita, have you heard of Vaquita Marina? Uh, in San Felipe. Okay, right? yeah. Is that right? I know it's in Baja somewhere. Okay. Yeah, but uh, they're doing a story. The Sea Shepherds are there, mm-hmm. um, Ooh, chasing the 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 uh, tortuaba poachers around and whatnot. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So there's nice. like six vaquita that they know of that are left. Yeah. Do you know about this? No. What what is this? Do you, you want to explain it? You want me to explain it? I'll tell you what what he told me. Yeah. Basically, there's you know this is a small dolphin, yep. right? Small uh, smallest uh, porpoise in the world. Okay, so how big is it? They're like this big. Oh, that's what my kid's going to be on the next uh, <laughs> on the next baby. Update. So yeah, so they fish for tortuaba. Right. Right. And it's, it's a giant endangered yeah. tortuaba. Well, I'll let not. Patrick, and then I'll explain the, sure. I'll paint the so whole picture. So it's great fishing. Yeah. The locals have fished there forever. They yep. use big nets yep. the, and the vaquita are bycatch and are pretty seriously like fucked, uh, according to what he was telling me. So this sea shepherds are there trying to stop the fishing activity. Um, and it was part of whatever our new NAFTA trade agree- agreement is. Somehow part of that was that Mexico would, would try to save this animal. Oh, I didn't oh. know So that. the U.S. did some sanction type thing or some penalty because they weren't doing it. So there's some pressure. So the Mexican Navy does have a ship there. Yeah. But it's essentially a dog and pony show. And he, he was like, he said a local was like, hey, like, this is fake. Like, go a quarter mile over there right. at sunset. Right. And he showed me a video on his phone, and it's like literally 40 trucks towing fishing boats with nets all going out at the same time. So it's, it's, it doesn't look good, I guess, for this animal. for the man. And for NAFTA. The no, NAFTA for agreement. the, tortu- the uh, vaquita. So, right. all right, yeah, let me explain. There's more to it, and for anybody that's interested that's listening to this, there's a, there's a net geo doc called Sea of Shadows. It's excellent, and it's on the vaquita. Um, so the vaquita is the smallest marine mammal, the smallest porpoise in the world. Like I said, a couple feet long. Mm. And a couple years ago, there was like 12 of them known, okay? okay? They've tried a whole bunch of different stuff to save them. They tried capturing them, putting them in captivity, all died. They tried rounding some up and putting them in pens offshore, killed the ones they tried to catch. Like, it's just been a fucking shit show. Wow. Now, the reason that the vaquita is in trouble, Patrick's right about the tortuaba, but it gets really, really complicated. And it's kind of interesting. You guys will like this. Um, first of all, we're one of the biggest causes of the problems because we in the United States control the Colorado River. The Colorado mm. River dumps into the northern Sea of Cortez. And as we control that water source, we took more and more water out of it for agriculture and to build things like Las Vegas and you make right. the Hoover Dam. Sure. And so what used to be the roaring Colorado River dumping into northern Sea of Cortez is now basically a stream. Mm. And when that river was dumping in there, it made this incredible nursery for this fish called a tortuaba. In fact, Kyle, if you can, pull up a picture of a tortuaba. These tortuaba are, if you're familiar with fish in California, they look like a white sea bass, except they get 12 feet long. Wow. And and they used to be so thick, they would run up the Colorado River the way salmon do in Alaska. So imagine a 12-foot long white fish running up the river of Colorado. Anyway, as as the water dried up, the fishery died out significantly. Now the fishery, believe it or not, the tortuaba fishery is still okay. It's not great, but it's okay. Okay. Now here's where the story gets really challenging and where this whole thing, and there you can see Vaquita on the screen as well, the, the small porpoises in the, in the green net there, um, where this whole thing gets really convoluted and difficult. Recently, like in the last five years, the Chinese have said that tortuaba swim bladders are a cure for God knows what. Small penises. Oh, of course. An aphro- aphrodisiac. Here we is go. Is that what it is? It's an aphrodisiac. Yep. Okay. And so these tortuaba, the, a swim bladder from a single tortuaba dehydrated is now worth, I'm making these numbers up, let's say 10 grand, which for yeah. a fisherman in Baja is five uh-huh. years of work. Right, right, right. right. And here's something that nobody knows um, that's worth knowing. If you spend any time in Baja, you'll know this. Every single activity like that, whether it's fishing related, animal related, resource related, drug related, human trafficking related, is controlled by the mafia down there. Mm. Every single one. And so this tortuaba fishery is controlled by a a complete mafia. So much so that the Mexican Navy are 
terrified of them because they will gun down these Navy ships. Jeez. They have way more power and control, and it's all done through Guero Negro, oh, sorry, Ensenada, which is a city in Baja. There's a Chinese guy there that runs the whole thing. Everybody knows there. his name. <laughs> yeah, and what happens is these Tortuava run like salmon, so they come, you can predict their migrations, basically. Mm -hmm. And when the Tortuava are coming through town, I've actually been in a town when this happened, you get the fuck out of town. Because if the Tortuaba are coming, which are illegal to fish, by the way, ah. but if the Tortuaba are coming, the mafia is coming. Brutal. And so you have to get out of town, whether you're Mexican, a gringo, it doesn't matter. And they set out all these gill nets. And the bycatch in these gill nets are the vaquita, because these little tiny vaquita, which you know never had a huge, huge population, but now are down to six known individuals, wow. come through, and all it takes is one gill net, just like in that photo, in the way, and they swim right into it, and now... You've lost a sixth of your population. Right. Unfucking believable, man. Um, and the so, whole whole thing is mafia controlled. And then the Sea Shepherds tried to step in, but uh, even the police are all paid off to like close the roads when the mafia come. Wow. It's like it's like a whole thing. Wait, so yeah. so the Sea Shepherds are out there uh, like basically battling this mafia? Yep. And they've that been down is, there for like six years. But dude, what's, holy what's super shit. This the is Sea Shepherds are treading lightly though. Like they know right, okay. they they are way, way, way offshore. And yeah, they don't want their the families to get killed and shit, they, right? They right. show some of this in that movie, Sea of Shadows, but here's the other thing that kind of annoys me about this whole thing. I think the Sea Shepherd, we've talked about them several times on this podcast, but I think the Sea Shepherd, overall their objectives are great. They're down there busting the local small-scale artisanal fisherman that's feeding his family plus selling, you know, a few cabrilla. Sure. When the mafia comes to town, they're getting the fuck out of there. Because they can't deal with the Mexican yeah, mafia. Yeah, of course not. So instead, the, the, and I'm not saying that anybody should be gill netting. Nobody should, and this is illegal. But the Sea Shepherd's like rolling around being like, hey, get that net out of the water to the guy who's like trying to feed his family and has like a little ponga and has been a fisherman for 12 generations. Yeah. You know? And then as soon as the Tortuaba in town or the mafia are there, they're gone. Well, Everybody's it's, gone. It's, the, it's equivalent to basically in the, in the U.S. drug war where they're arresting people with an eighth of weed who are just exactly. trying to get their family high. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's, you know. he's a nice guy. He's been a drug dealer for nine generations. He's just <laughs> and trying then, to get his family he's just high. trying to get his family high, yeah. man. <laughs> and then in the back end, you, you got the CIA actually like running the drugs and block, blockading for them to get the drugs into the U.S., you know? It's so fucked, man. Everything. I think you might be watching too many Sicario Yeah, that sounds movies. like a Sicario. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, and then they bring in an assassin from Colombia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Used to be a lawyer. A bunch of I drugs saw and cash it. In it was a wall. documentary, I'm pretty yeah. sure. <laughs> Wild times. So if you want more behind the scenes stuff, stuff that we cannot show on YouTube, Darwin Awards, video breakdowns and reviews, check out the Patreon. It's full of hours and hours of incredible exclusive content, stuff that you guys are going to love. Swipe up, click the link, do the thing, come and hang out on Patreon. See you guys there.